Number one tip is that if you have a contract, like a written contract with your client, or even if it's a purchase order, or something where you're showing them that if it's a customized thing that you're making, there needs to be some language there that is saying that chargebacks are not permitted once you sign this because you understand the nature of the services or the products that are being provided and they're customized or even if they're not customized, but there's a lot of work that goes into it in order to give them that final product or service, especially if you're service oriented industry. There's a lot of event planners, photographers, the event professionals in general who ended up getting a lot of chargebacks because either something was canceled or they couldn't deliver the entire package because of COVID especially. And so a lot of chargebacks were happening and then the chargeback was for the entire amount. And I know as professionals in the service industry that there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes before the final product is actually provided and delivered to your customer. And so a lot of times you're like, I want to get compensated for that. Even if I don't get the final product, I can definitely get compensation for the work that we have done. But what happens with chargebacks is that you don't get that compensation. Everything is given back generally to the consumer. So you want to have language in your contract. Now there's a double reason why this language needs to be in there, but you need to have language in the contract and also in any type of purchase order or any type of, you know, payment receipts that you're giving them your policy on chargebacks. What is your policy on it? Is it that they're not allowed? Or if you are considering chargeback, then you need to reach out to the company first to figure out if there's some type of way you can figure out a proper payment compensation or are they going to pay for all the fees of your legal fees or any other expenses that you're incurring in order to defend this chargeback that you know your client is claiming and so you want to be able to have that language your policy on chargebacks in your contracts and in your purchase orders also because it helps the future when it does happen it gives notice to your consumer that's what i mean by that like you're letting them know that hey this is our policy on chargebacks and you're agreeing to it when you sign this contract and that's what the whole point is that they're agreeing to these policies they're agreeing to the way you are running your business and they're okay with it. So they're signing that or they're agreeing to it by purchasing it and moving forward. So that's notice and the showing agreement also, but then later on it shows evidence that you do have a policy and your client, this person that is now asking for a chargeback, knew about this policy, they agreed to the policy and here's your evidence for the policy as well. And so you need to have it in writing it's really helpful. Now, number two with the chargebacks is that maybe your payment plan needs to be a little bit different. Maybe you take payments in a divided form rather than a lump sum in the front or at the end of the services. And so what happens is that at least when you have a payment plan system, there's partial money that is being considered as compensation for the work that you have already done or compensation for a booking of a date that is being reserved for a certain person and a client and you're not giving it that booking or date to anybody else. And so you can take an advance that is non-refundable and that needs to be in your contract again or in language that is obviously apparent to your consumer whether it's on your website or whether it's in their receipt or whatever but there needs to be language where again they're getting notice, they're agreeing to it and it's showing that we are taking an advance because we are reserving the spot for you and nobody else can take that spot. And so we're missing out on all potential clients and potential revenue that could be coming in on a future date because we're giving it to you. And so that is called consideration and it is justifiable. But again, you cannot justify it by taking 80% of the amount because then you have to think about what well, was that really a consideration or is that just a lot of money that you're taking up front. So take an amount that seems reasonable, take an amount that seems justified because courts do look at that and they may not think 80% is reasonable, but they might think 30% is reasonable. So look at your industry, look at the kind of work that you're doing, look at the reservation that you're doing and you know how the time block that you're doing for your customer or your client and see what's reasonable and what's reasonable in your mind and where you would be okay paying if you were the client in that position. So have like a payment plan that kind of covers these issues. So you're not feeling a super dent if there is a chargeback. Now, when it comes to the time of the chargeback and you've gotten notice from the 
the credit card company that, hey, somebody's charging back. Have your paperwork available. Have it ready to go. Have your emails ready to go. And if there is some emails that you're having, correspondence between you and the client, and now you're starting feeling like, okay, this is kind of getting a little contentious. This is getting where there is a disagreement about the payment. There's a disagreement about how much to be paid try to resolve it if you can try to resolve it because there are times as a consumer we're just like well i didn't get the final deliverables and because i didn't get the final deliverables why do i need to pay for everything else but there's no understanding that everything else might be that you have worked hard you have prepared you have put in some hours into it so think about a compensation you know a settlement with your client where you feel that you're getting compensated for the amount of work that you've done but you're also giving them a fair deal and then put that in writing where they're agreeing to it and so therefore they won't go back and still do the chargeback even though they've agreed to it right so have that agreement between you and your client if you are coming to some sort of settlement where there is some compensation coming to you and there's some type of refund coming to them have it in writing that there's this agreement that is happening and then later on when you are protecting yourself and defending this chargeback you can take all of this information take all of the documents take all of the emails take the agreements that they sign take your purchase order and you send it as a package and you tell the credit card company hey listen this wasn't something that was a surprise this was something that they knew about they had noticed they agreed to it and here you go now i can't promise you any results but what i can say is that you are prepared and when you come in prepared then others also who are receiving whatever you've come in with are also taking you seriously and it's not just some random agreements and thoughts that are coming out and whatever emails that you're writing Write them as if they can go to court one day. So be very thoughtful about your emails and very thoughtful about what you are saying because you never know when that can be considered as evidence or as something that is showing a record of the paper trail. Well, I hope this was helpful because I know it was. So go share it with your friends, go share it with your other colleagues or industry friends of yours and help them understand how to handle chargebacks. These are simple, easy tips. Very much you can apply them into your business and integrate them into your business. Legal strategies that are easy to follow and integrate. I will see you next time. Remember to subscribe and share. And until next time, see you later.